My name is Steve Hadhazi, and I am here speaking to you on the behalf of InsuranceClaim.com. Today, we are here to talk a little bit about the debonding or loosening of floor tile that has been subjected to water damage. Most of us that have been in the property damage claim business for a while know all too well that floor tile will often debond from its concrete substrate if it is subjected to large amounts of water. But how much water does it take to debond floor tile? How long does the water have to dwell on the tile to cause delamination? Can tile debond without cracking the surrounding grout? We are going to perform an experiment to try and find some of the answers to these questions and more. The bonding agent that holds down floor tile is called thin set or mortar. So I think it would be appropriate to see what one of the largest thin set manufacturers in the world has to say about getting thin set wet again subsequent to the initial flooring installation. This is a technical bulletin from the Mapia Corporation entitled Flooring Issues After Flooding. The bulletin begins by saying, what will happen if my floor is flooded? The various installation components in a tile or stone floor system can react differently when subjected to water damage from such events as hurricanes, flood events, or plumbing failures. Mappy notes that cement-based mortars and cement-based grout are among some of the items that could be damaged by water. Mappy products that could be affected are cement-based mortars and cement-based grout, among other things. Interestingly, it also notes that ceramic, porcelain, or stone tiles can suffer excessive expansion or shrinkage when subjected to water damage. Next, it talks about how excessive pressures to the installation could cause the tile or stone to delaminate from the substrate. In the upcoming experiment, you will see firsthand what excessive pressures from expansion and shrinkage can do to a floor tile installation. On the next page of the bulletin, it goes on to say that the potential effects of exposures to excess moisture include disintegration of porous tiles, delamination of impervious glass tiles, bond failure and or warping of agglomerate marble tiles, curling of verde green, Mexican black, and Spanish red marble tiles, Highly polished marble surfaces may become dull or even discolored. There's also the possibility of naturally occurring iron in some marble tiles to cause staining. Let's go ahead and watch the experiment, and then afterward we'll talk a little bit about what we saw.
Now, let's talk a little bit about debonded tile. Although tile flooring commonly gets wet during a casual cleaning, it is excessive moisture, such as what may emanate from a flood or burst water pipe that we are concerned with. More so, we are concerned with scenarios where water makes its way past the surface of the tile and into contact with the underlying mortar bed, thin set, or other bonding agent. Although it is certainly possible for water to leach its way from the surface of the tile through the grout between the tiles, we have found that much more commonly the water infiltration is from the edge of the tiles where they terminate into a wall. The reason for this is that when spreading the thin set with the trowel, the grooves are typically wide open where they face the wall. When a flood occurs, these grooves become pathways where the water can quickly and easily make its way underneath the tile and in contact with the thin set or other bonding agent where the damage may begin. Once underneath the tile, the water may be trapped indefinitely. Whether any damage occurs is a question that may only be answered on a case-by-case -case basis. It should come as no surprise that tiles located along the perimeter of the floor at the intersection of walls will be the most likely areas to suffer damage, as that is the easiest place for the water to infiltrate. So if you are inspecting a floor for damage subsequent to a water intrusion, then you might want to start at the perimeter and work your way towards the middle of the floor. The grooves in the thin set bed are typically made by the tile layer in short strokes of two feet long or less. This means that it is altogether possible that the pathway for the water through the groove may hit a dead end less than two feet in from the edge of the floor. So, if during your inspection you notice less and less debonding of the tile as you move further from the edge of the floor and approach the center of the room, then that could be a good indicator that the debonding of the tile was caused by water damage. It is important to note that it is a somewhat common occurrence for a tile layer to make a mistake while troweling on the thin set and leave a small area with less thin set than should have been applied. If someone were to walk over this tile or tap it with a coin, it may give a hollow sound due to the lack of thin set being applied in that specific area. However, it is somewhat easy to make the distinction between areas that have been water damaged and the occasional small spot where the thin set was under applied. Ask yourself these questions. Number one, was the area where the damaged tile was found subjected to excessive moisture? If it was not, then it is likely that issue was caused due to the thin set being under applied during installation of the floor. Number two, when you tapped on the tiles near the perimeter of the floor at the intersection of a wall where water damage had occurred, did you locate debonded tiles? If the answer is yes, then it is best to ask someone who lives at the property whether they know if the tiles were like that before or not. Sometimes women are the ones most knowledgeable with regard to this as high heels cause debonded tiles to make that distinctive hollow thumping sound as they move across the tiles. Number three, if you said yes to number two, then continue to tap the tiles further and further from the wall. If you do not notice any more debonded tiles, or they are considerably less in number, then it is likely that the damage to the tiles closer to the wall was caused by the water infiltration. Number four, remember, it is possible to have both water damaged tiles and the occasional tile 
that was inappropriately installed. In fact, I cannot remember the last home that I have inspected that I did not suspect at least one of the tiles had been inappropriately installed. One question that I am frequently asked is, if water can cause tile to debond, then why is all of the tile in my shower and on my exterior patio not debonded? The answer to this one is very simple. Water is not getting underneath the tile. The surface grout can be a source of water entry if the grout is damaged or if the water sits long enough. However, the amount of water that would potentially leach through the grout would be small. On exterior patios, the tile around the perimeter of the patio will typically have the trowel grooves plugged up with grout, simply for the sake of appearance. Also, there is usually a four inch or so drop off the edge of the patio and so water would have to rise fairly high to work its way in. Also, have you checked? Many of the perimeter tiles on exterior installations are debonded. Lastly, be aware that it is not necessary that an entire tile debond to constitute damage. Much of the time, only small portions of each tile have come loose. And remember, grout is rarely cracked around newly debonded tiles. Usually, the grout cracks later as people walk over the debonded tiles and loosen them further. However, if you are dealing with your insurance carrier on a water damage claim to your floor, do not let them make a big deal out of the few tiles that may have been inappropriately installed. You'll probably hear them say things like, wow, yeah, I have that at my house, or gosh, I see that all the time at homes, or I used to be a tile installer and that's really common. You're not making a claim for those. Your claim should be based solely on the merit of the tiles damaged by water. If your insurance policy owes to match building materials, you may be owed replacement of all of your floor tile on the merit of just the water damaged tile. Sometimes an insurance carrier will tell you that they quote unquote do not owe to match building materials such as tile flooring. Many times this is less seated in fact and more about your insurance carrier's interpretation of their contract. Remember, you have the right to disagree with their interpretation. If you find yourself dealing with any of the issues that we've discussed today, don't hesitate to call a public insurance adjuster in your area. Remember, they are the real experts and they are on your side.